A water softener brine tank is where the brine is made for a water softener, but there's only one tube going into the water softener, or is it coming out of the water softener? What's this part in here called, and what does it do? And there's some other parts inside. What do they do? And this spigot on the outside, shouldn't that be connected to something? Well, I'm going to explain to you how a water softener brine tank works, starting right now. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. Now, this video is for the homeowner, do-it-yourself, or plumber, water filtration specialist that wants to learn more about how a brine tank actually works within a water softener system. Now, you need to know how a water softener works to fully understand this video. Now, if you're not sure, I've got a great video that explains the whole process. I've got a link in the description down below. Check it out. Now, when you look at the parts of a water softener, you can see that uh, the brine tank is the reservoir where the salt and the water is. Now, not every water softener is a two-piece water softener like what you see in this image. Some water softeners are what we call a one-piece water softener. Now, it's a bit of a misnomer because actually the one tank is sitting inside the other tank. So, for the, the Water Boss or Aquamaster water softeners, for example, when you see the tan tank on the outside, that's the brine tank. The, the black tank that you see in this image on the inside that has the cutaway taken out of it, that's the media tank. So the media tank is within the brine tank. So let's look at the parts that make up a brine tank. So obviously there's the outside part, that's the actual brine tank itself, but within the brine tank there's some tubing. It's usually 3 8 inch tubing that uh, connects inside. So what it goes into, this white part that you see inside is called the brine well, and this cap that goes on the top is the brine well cap. And then inside there you can see the float. So let me grab a float and we'll have a better look at that. So, so this is the actual float or float shutoff assembly. So you can see there's a number of parts to it. So this is where the water goes into the brine tank, goes into the top of the float, and it flows down through here. As it's flowing down through, the water comes out of the bottom here and it fills the brine tank. Now, when it, it's the water softeners in the brine cycle, when we're actually sucking the brine out of the, um, out of the brine tank and running it into the water softener, then the water also goes back through here and goes through the tubing to the water softener itself. So there's a couple other parts to it. So this is the actual float part here right here and uh, and what, what why the this float is here is actually is if something like the float doesn't determine how much water is in the brine tank it only determines the limit of how much water can go into the brine tank so for example when the water softener is going through its regeneration cycle when it's getting to the ward the end of the cycle and it's putting water back into the brine tank to make brine for the next cycle the water softener valve determines how much water goes in might be uh, three gallons of water or something like that. It calculates that out itself. But if, if at, at the time the, the water softener is refilling, your power happened to go out at that same time, the valve wouldn't know when, to, when that time is up, when that, when that three gallons is up. So the water would keep rising. So what would happen is the water would um, hit this float, it would, um, it would go up and it would shut off the water flow to the, to the whole uh, system so it wouldn't overflow. So that's an important part. And I should mention that this is actually adjustable. So if, your water, if you have a very large water softener and you have very hard water, then the float might, be, might need to be moved a little bit higher because it may be limiting, the adjustment may be too low, it may be limiting um, how much water is going in. In other words, if it's supposed to be three gallons of water but the float is set for lower than that, then it's going to not put in the required three gallons of water that the water softener needs to regenerate. So it's adjustable. And it's actually pretty simple to adjust. You just kind of grab this part here and then you can just slide the float up and then you just move this little rubber limiter into place. So that's pretty uh, simple to adjust. So the other thing you have to keep in mind about the, um, about the float is the connection to the, uh, the tubing. So in a number of new installations, I've noticed that folks have struggled a little bit with this connection. And uh, let me show you about how this uh, connection actually works. So when you get the brine tank for your new water softener, then you need to check this C, there's a C-clip up here. So just be careful of that. Now, unfortunately, this is all black and the C-clip is black, so it's a little difficult to see. But if you pull that out, let me get that out here. There. So that's what the C-clip looks like. So you need to pull that out 
because this fitting is like a quick connect fitting, like a John Guest type fitting. And, uh, and once you pull that out, now this is wrapped in, in tape when you first get it. And inside, there's an insert like this. It's called a poly insert. And uh, so that poly insert needs to go into the 3 8 inch tubing. So you slide that inside. And then with the, the poly insert inside the tubing, you slide the whole thing into the fitting. Now you'll feel some resistance, but you're not done yet. You need to push harder until you drive it home. And it'll go in about another quarter of an inch. And then you use that C-clip to connect it here. So often when there's a concern with the brine tank, too much water being in the brine tank, etc., this is one of the things that you would be checking to, uh, to make sure that this uh, connection is sound. So this is the actual brine well that comes inside the, uh, the brine tank. And there's a cap that looks like this. And uh, the cap is quite important. So the cap isn't just an accessory. If you lose it, no big deal. What the cap does, it keeps, when you're refilling the salt into the brine tank, it keeps salt from actually getting down inside here, which would, which would follow that, um, that float assembly and it wouldn't work properly. So another important thing to, to look at about the brine well is these slots at the bottom. So these slots at the bottom is where the water comes down into the brine tank and also where the brine is pulled out of the brine tank and it goes up through the, the float assembly and uh, connects to the water softener. Now if you have a salt clog in the bottom of your water softener and uh, the salt uh, gets soft and it congeals and it all forms together and it closes up these slots at the bottom, your water softener won't work. So again, that's an important part. So then we have the overflow. So the overflow connects the brine well to the brine tank and it's, it's an overflow that if for some reason the water softener put too much water in the brine tank and if for some reason the flow didn't shut off the water, then it would flow out of this overflow. Now, if you have a, a sump hole nearby or a floor drain nearby, then you can definitely connect some tubing up to this, to that floor drain. Um, if you don't have that, just put a, a short uh, length of tubing on there and just uh, put it into a bucket. If you happen to be looking for a new water softener, you can go to our e-commerce store, watereastore.com. I'll put a link in the description down below. So I should mention there's two kinds of water softeners, a pre-fill and a post-fill. So a pre-fill means that at the beginning of the regeneration cycle, it puts, uh, the valve puts water in with the brine to make the brine. A post-fill means at the last part of the uh, regeneration cycle, um, the valve puts water in to make brine. Now, which one you have, I've got a great video that uh, shows you, uh, that explains the difference and tells you how you can figure that out. And again, I'll put a link in the description down below so you can check that out for yourself. All right, so how does the brine tank combine all these parts to make the brine tank actually work? Well, there's water inside the brine tank. Water touching salt makes brine. So once the brine is there, that's used to regenerate the water softener. So typically the second cycle of a water softener is the brine cycle. And that's where it sucks the brine. So through this tube, the water softener creates a vacuum or a suction that sucks the brine from this brine tank. It sucks out all of the brine when it goes through that cycle and then it uses that to regenerate the media. Then when it's finished going through its cycle, or if it's a pre-fill water softener at the beginning of the next cycle, through this same tube, the water softener valve puts the right amount of water back inside there. Now water touching salt absorbs the salt and that's what makes the brine. So as long as the salt level is higher than the water level inside the, the, um, the brine tank, you'll get the right dosage of salt. Now if you have a pre-fill water softener, you don't know because you don't know how high that water level is going to be unless you actually stand there and watch it fill. But uh, typically half full or so is, is, uh, is the, the correct amount of salt for most people. I do have a video that talks about how much uh, salt you should have in your brine tank. And again, I'll put a link in the description down below. So it sucks the brine from here, uses it to regenerate the water softener, puts new water back in here, to make the brine for the next cycle, and then it goes on from there. If for some reason too much water ends up inside here, it could come out the overflow if the float doesn't shut it off. Some of the older water softeners don't have a float. It's a very important safety factor, but that's basically how these things work. Now, if suddenly you have far more water or far less water in your brine tank than you typically would, then definitely there's a problem. So I've got a great troubleshooting video. I'll put a link in the description down below. You should definitely check that out. 
Click here for my next video on water softers, and I'll see you there. Any questions or comments, add them down below. I read them all. I'd love to answer yours.